What is going on guys? Welcome back to another Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl Wi-Fi battle. Now I know what you're thinking, you're wondering where have the battles been, but they are finally back. We got a brand new team, we're ready to get going in the swing of things. And I've got some really fun mons that I'm working with here, they hit really hard and nobody really sees them coming. So, looking at the opponent's team, it's a little interesting, because first things first, I'm noticing obviously the sun with the victory bell, but then again there's also a Tyranitar, so there's two different forms of weather, which is going to make things a little bit interesting, and you know, I'm, I'm confident in this team, this is the first match that I'm having with this squad, uh, but let's go ahead and see how these guys can do. But before we get right into the match, I want to give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, Friends and Dragons. Friends and Dragons is a free-to-play strategy-based mobile RPG game that's available on both the App Store and Google Play. This game combines elements of hero collection, strategy and puzzler gameplay in a nice pretty looking fantasy world, and what sets it apart mostly is its unique co-op, cause I love me some co-op. The first thing that I noticed about playing Friends and Dragons was the unique control setup. So rather than moving all the members of the teams individually, you can pick one hero and use that hero to move the rest of the team around the battlefield. For me, this creates unique strategies and endless choices depending on your skills and their heroes. My favorite part about the game is figuring out which heroes specialize in what type of ability and kind of building the strategies around that. You can collect and upgrade over 150 heroes, which is fun because I'm all about collecting. Friends and Dragons has a ton of special limited events that you can participate in. For example, you can unlock the Chase the Dragon event. Upon completing the tutorial, a unique one-time event unlocks for all new players. You can fight through increasing difficult dragon dungeons and defeat hordes of orcs. Go ahead and download Friends and Dragons using the link in my description, or you can scan the QR code on the screen and get a special bonus of one free summon, daily energy potions, and gold for a free and exclusive offer, available via my link only, so you gotta do it now. Also, join my guild shown on the screen so we can help each other out. So, I'm gonna decide to lead off with my Marowak. Now, the reason for that is because I was expecting the Torkoal lead, as they actually end up going with the Ninetales. So, the reason why I wanted Marowak in against Torkoal is because it would likely set up Stealth Rock turn 1 and allow me to hit it hard with an Earthquake. But, uh, in the matchup here, it's not looking too great for Marowak. I do not want to take a Solar Beam right to the Skull. So I have to switch out here turn one, as uh, I'm going to end up bringing in the Hariyama. Now Hariyama actually has a pretty good matchup uh, against the Ninetales, because I'm actually thick fat, so I can take, you know, half damage from uh, fire moves. Even in the sun, I'm going to be able to take an attack. So there's the Solar Beam. It actually doesn't do a whole lot, because, because I'll tell you what, Hariyama is not lacking in the thickness department. I mean, look at that dump truck my girl is lugging around. Got to have a permit for that damn thing. So I'm thinking the Ninetales will probably want to stay in here and try to get like an overheat heat wave or something like that. Uh, so I can go for a fake out. That's actually really nice because it allows me another turn of leftovers. You got to keep that dump truck somehow and I guess you got to keep eating. So uh, now I'm just going to end up going for the Earthquake as they end up missing a Will-O-Wisp. Which, you know, Willow miss living up to the name. And you love to see it if you're me. You hate to see it if you're that majestic fox over there. So Earthquake is able to take care of this thing. Um, and the Will-O-Wisp was actually kind of a rather interesting play because most of the time I feel like you see Guts Hariyama, uh, so that would have benefited me. But although, you know, of course I'm thick fat, so it's nice that that missed. Uh, so now this allows them a free switch and they decide to go into the bane of my existence, which is Clefable. I swear, since 1998 this thing has been haunting my dreams and you just, you can't get away around it. But luckily I do have a spider, um, <laughs> and so I decide to go into this thing as I don't really know what type of Clefable this thing's gonna be, but I do know if it's Calm Mind, I can at least hit it, you know, pretty hard with a Poison Jab. So, I've got a little bit of a decision to make here. I figure, you know, Clefable's probably not gonna wanna stay in here. That's a super useful Pokemon for them, and I know unless it has the Flamethrower, um, it's not gonna be able to stay in. So I decided to go for the Sticky Web, knowing that I was gonna be faster. I figure even if it did Flamethrower, I would be able to get the webs up before uh, getting knocked out. But they're actually gonna end up hard switching directly into Torkoal, and that's kind of definitely not what I wanted because of course the Rapid Spin is coming. And this team that I'm using does kind of require that Sticky Web support. You'll notice a lot of my attackers are pretty slow, um, but they hit really hard. So if I can get that Sticky Web support and be able to outspeed some stuff, I can, you know, lay down some pain. But, uh, I go into the Marowak here, it does rapid spin unfortunately, as this actually does allow me to just go ahead and hit something with an Earthquake, and they end up bringing back in the Clefable, because I'll tell you what, there is not a whole lot that can switch into a Marowak holding a Thick Club. Uh, the thickness of that club does allow me to hit this thing for over half damage with an Earthquake, and that is pretty nice. Marowak does not even need the Sticky Web support against the Clefable, as now one more Earthquake just takes care of it. People will be underestimating my dude Marowak. I tell you what, this thing 
It's a super fun Pokemon to use. With its super unique item, it gets that big ol' attack boost from the Thick Club. And, uh, yeah, just definitely hits super hard. But, uh, now they're gonna go back into the Torkoal. The main reason for that uh, is because the sun went away. And I know the inevitable reality is that there's a freaking victory belt back there that's gonna be able to just absolutely abuse that sun with the chlorophyll and it is gonna be a very scary threat to the team. But, uh, before that thing comes out I'm able to at least knock out the Torkoal with an earthquake and that is great news because at least now they don't have anything that can set up the sun again. Uh, so as long as I can deal with this victory bell here I, I shouldn't, it shouldn't be too much of a problem uh, later on. But the bad news is that at the moment this thing is a very large threat and I kind of just have to figure out who to, you know, sacrifice to be able to, you know, figure out a way uh, to knock this thing out. So of course the solar beam comes, I go into Skun Tank here, uh, who does take a solar beam nicely. And seeing that damage, I'm thinking, you know, I can take any other attack from this thing as long as it doesn't have Weather Ball. But pretty much 10 out of 10 times I'm about to get bopped in the face by a weather ball here so I decide to make a play into Hariyama again remember the thick fat is gonna allow me to reduce the damage uh, from fire moves and of course weather ball in the sun does turn into the fire type so this thing goes ahead and throws the uh, throws the orb right at me and I actually take that super nicely as this thing's just whittling itself down with the life orb uh, now getting into the Hariyama here is actually super nice because I can go ahead and give this thing a high five or I mean a high, a high three because I have just three meaty ass fingers. So I go for the fake out, get some chip damage, but more importantly just kind of stall out a sun turn and uh, the chip isn't, isn't bad either because if I can get this thing to the range where a sucker punch from uh, my Ariados can come in, that could be super nice. It's also kind of deciding if I wanted to save Hariyama uh, knowing that they have the Tyranitar in the back, you know, Hariyama is super useful to me, but I would have essentially just had to switch into something and get sacked here against the Solar Beam. So I decided to stay uh, to stay in. Hariyama goes down. A little bit of an interesting play there, but I'm trying to... I, in my mind, I kind of have a way around this thing, as now I can just go right into the area dose and uh, force this thing to either take it out with a Sucker Punch or knock it to range to where um, the... Life Orb Recoil will knock it out. So I go for the Sucker Punch here, bop him right in the old Fleshlight, and he uh, unfortunately doesn't knock it out. It also does not put it into Life Orb range as a Weather Ball easily takes care uh, of the area dose. But it's looking like at least I've been able to whittle this thing down to the point where it is only going to get one more hit left in it. And uh, I just decide to go into Skun Tank. I kind of have to figure out who's the least useful for me in this matchup. Uh, unfortunately, that is going to be Skun Tank. But... Uh, I just go for the Sludge Bomb here as they actually end up switching out. Um, that thing still has one hit left in it, it's not going to be super, super useful for them. Uh, but they do go into the Tyranitar. They say, hey, no more sun, I prefer sand. And it's a much less pleasant uh, weather, if you ask me, because now you just can't see a damn thing. Sand is probably the worst. But uh, that thing, you know, of course, doesn't take anything from a Sludge Bomb. Also, don't get a complimentary poison, which would have been nice. Um, but at least if. Skuntank's gonna go down. I'm gonna go for a taunt before that just because if this thing did end up being like a Dragon Dance Tyranitar, any type of setup, you know, would have been pretty bad for me at that point. But uh, they do end up going for the Stone Edge, takes care of Skuntank, and now this allows me a free switch into whatever I would like. And that, of course, is the absolute powerhouse, <laughs> the Marowak. Um, so baby Kangaskhan over here and wearing his Halloween mask, gonna go right for an earthquake. And they really don't have anything that wants to switch into this. So max speed Marowak actually outspeed Tyranitar if it doesn't have speed investment. And that's exactly what happened. Uh, so Marowak is just racking up the kills here, making shit happen. And you, honestly, you'll love to see it. But uh, now they go into the Typhlosion. Now, of course, Typhlosion at this point is pretty much going to always be Choice Scarf. So it's going to obviously be able to outspeed plus an eruption from a full health. Uh, Typhlosion is going to be just overkill. So Marowak goes down, but not before it was able to just punch some holes uh, with his bone, giggity. And now, at least that allows me a free switch. Because I was been, I've been saving Larry the Lobster, aka Larry the Crab, just because of this Tyranitar. And as long as it's locked into uh, the eruption, I should be able to take at least one. But the scary news is I do have to hit a Crab Hammer. Uh, which if you've ever used a freaking crab Pokemon, you know is not an easy thing to do. Uh, but I do live the eruption nicely. I go for the crab hammer, luckily do hit it, and that is going to take care of the Typhlosion. So Kingler coming out on top. 
Another one of my like favorite Pokemon from Gen 1 that just doesn't get enough love, but I'm out here supporting my dude, Larry, out here killing it. So, uh, only Pokemon they have left is going to be that Victory Bell, and of course, you know, uh, it's down to the point where it only has, you know, one hit left in it with that Life Orb. But Kingler says, you know what, rather than, you know, giving you the satisfaction of taking yourself out, I'm actually just going to go ahead and do it myself. Uh, he says, without the sun, you are nothing, and these crab legs are not just delicious, they are also speedy. Uh, so that allows me to take care of the Victory Bell, and that is going to be the end of the match there. So... I had a lot of fun with this team. It's pretty unique, you know, it didn't really do what it's supposed to there, but it's honestly still really fun to use. But uh, yeah, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like, you know, hit me with a comment, help your boy out on the algorithm, and I will see you guys next time. Peace out.